So my name is Veronica. I'm from California, San Diego. I have a CPS case in Riverside, California. And my my next court date is 6-15-21, and they're trying to take away my parental rights. First and foremost, they've got taken away from the father, which he has passed away. They've been there since two, September um, 18th. Welcome back. This is Cynthia Becker, and this is The Secret, How to Fight Child Protective Services and Win. Before we take another call, I wanted to let everybody know um, I have a new series that we started, and it is called Meet the CPS Defense Experts and Advocates, where I interview attorneys, experts, and advocates on Tuesdays and Thursday evenings. And you can find this information on Facebook. You can actually go to the reality series, CPS, The Horror Stories, to get the information on this new show. And if you have any questions, you can contact me at 626-594-5526. So if you happen to be an attorney, an advocate, and or an expert uh, that fights for families fighting to get their children back from Child Protective Services, then reach out to me and let me interview you. So if you are ready, Dean and Vince, to take another call, we can go ahead and proceed with Veronica in California. Veronica, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Do you want to go ahead and start with your question? Yes. Okay. So my name is Veronica. I'm from California, San Diego. I have a CPS case in Riverside, California. And my my next court date is 6-15-21, and they're trying to take away my parental rights. First and foremost, they've got taken away from the father, which he has passed away. They've been there since two, September um, 18, 2019, and I barely got noticed that they were in the system. So I, I'm, I'm like, just. What do you mean you barely were barely informed? Found, I was barely informed on September 14th because I got a hold of the father and. Before the, okay, let me tell you a little story then. Okay, so before, I haven't been in their life for six years because due to, um, due, because I couldn't take care of them because I had an addiction. So I, they went to my ex-husband, ex-husband took them in. So, um, they've been taken, he's had them for, I'm going to say three years. He got, they got taken away in September 18, 2019, and they've been stuck in there for two years. My daughter is 12, 13 years old. She is 10, 13 years old, and my son is 17 now. So where I'm at is they're trying to take my parental rights away. And can they just do that without even letting me know that they've been um, in the system? They did not even let let me know that they were um, taken away, even though I've been clean. Even though I've been working since 2018, I've been paying child support, I pay my taxes, I pay everything, and I have I had not had I didn't even know they were in the system. Did you have any custody of them prior to this, when they yes. were living with their father? Yes. So we had a verbal agreement. That's what it was. We had a verbal agreement, and he took them in. He said, "When you get better, contact me." I said, "Okay, that will happen." So a um, couple of months later, I, I would still talk to him. He would let me phone call them back and forth. But then it got to where I couldn't talk to them no more. 
So, and plus I was in my addiction for a long, for already heavy. But, okay, hold on one second. Prior, okay, okay, but besides this verbal agreement, what yeah. did the, what was the legal agreement? There was no legal agreement. So it was just a verbal. Technically, you both have him. equal custody. Technically, I have phys- I have custody. He passed away. Okay. But he passed away. Ma'am, who, ma'am, who, who called CPS on you? I didn't. Nobody called CPS on me. They called CPS on him. I don't know who called CPS on him. I already got okay. the report. Do you, do you do you have an attorney? I have an attorney. Yes. Okay, and have okay. you gone to have you gone to rehab? Have you been on the drug suboxone? I've been I've been um, sober for three years. I paid for when I went to court. I paid for my own drug test, a hair follicle test. It wasn't cheap, and I'm I enrolled into um, parenting classes. So that's where I'm at right now, and they, and they, I'm allowed a visit once a month for one hour, but the social worker says it's all right for two hours. Unsupervised, and that's where I'm at right now. Let me ask you this: You said your children were 17 and 12. Yes. Okay. No, 13. My my daughter is 13, and my my son is 17. Okay. So under California law, if either of them don't want to be adopted and don't want to lose their parental rights, they can stop the adoption or the stop the termination of your parental rights. Um, okay. So here's where I'm at. So um, my oldest daughter. Talked to visit with my youngest daughter and told her, um, why are you getting adopted? Four minutes. The option, they told me I had no other option. They, this is what they told my 13-year-old daughter. So my 13-year-old, my oldest daughter told my 13-year-old, no, you have options. You can, you don't have to get adopted. Why are you getting adopted for? She said, I, my youngest daughter, I didn't know that. So I have to see what she's, if she still feels that way. So well, that's you, where you, she's at. Well, this is what you should do. You should talk to your attorney. Find out if your attorney knows that your children don't want to be adopted and then call them as witnesses at your termination hearing. That could stop the the termination of your parental rights. You might also have had, you might have waived it, a notice argument with respect to them starting a case and not giving you notice, uh, you know, until later on. Uh, But you got to raise... I told my lawyer that. Okay, go I'm sorry. But you got to raise that at the beginning got to raise that uh, the first time you appear. So I would talk okay. to my attorney about making that type of motion as well to set aside back on li- based upon lack of notice to you. But you, you're going to okay. have to definitely, you know, I tell people this all the time, meet with your attorney, even if it's on the phone, come up with a strategy and then implement the strategy. That's what you have to do. Okay? Okay, so when I show for court, just... No, no, no. You got to do that. You got to do this before you show up to court. You oh, gotta, I know that. You got to do this like last week. So on Monday, okay. you got to be on the phone or be on the email. Say, hey, attorney, I need to meet with you. We got to form a strategy. We got to implement that strategy so I don't, I don't lose my children. By the way, did you know that my kids don't want to be adopted? Yeah. Okay. So that's what you need to tell okay. your attorney. Okay. Okay. All right. Listen, I want to thank you for calling and thank you for listening. Call us in a few weeks. Let us know what happened. Give us an update, all right? I will. And I always listen to your show. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, Cynthia, we're we're coming to the end of another show. Uh, Anything you want to say? I want to say that if people are in need of an attorney and an expert, they can go to our website, cpsattorneyrolodex.com. And, Dean, I, again, loved having you um, on both of our shows. Uh, it was a pleasure getting to interview you, and um, I wanted you to share about your book that you wrote also. Yeah, yeah. Thank you both for having me on. I appreciate the invite and the opportunity. Uh, my website, abuse-excuse.com, has a accused questionnaire form there, so folks can go over there and fill out their situation. I will respond back to them. Uh, no charge for that. Uh, there's also a what's called Tongs Tips page over there, okay, which may be helpful as well. 
uh, for those who One minute. a Vincent Davis type attorney, there's a how to choose your attorney page over there uh, as well. Because uh, there were callers from all over the country here, obviously. Uh, my book, I have three, but the uh, the most recent, which was actually published almost 20 years ago, a lot of the information is still relevant. Uh, it's called Elusive Innocence, Survival Guide for the Falsely Accused. And that book is at Amazon and has been out, like I said, for about 20 years. I think it's in its seventh printing right now. Hey, Dean, I want to thank you for being on. I appreciate it. We're going to have you on again, man, because I think you're the real yeah. deal. Um <laughs> Everybody, check me out on YouTube, uh, Vincent W. Davis, Attorney at Law. And we're going to see you next week on the radio.